Hey, it's Michelle, your CSC Biology Tutor once again with the series Know the Differences, Important Terms to Understand. In this video, I'll be looking at the respiratory system and we're going to pay attention to breathing, gaseous exchange, and respiration. These three terms, you need to know their differences and not get mixed up thinking that they all mean the same thing. Alright, so let's look at breathing. Breathing is the body movements allowing air to enter and leave our lungs. So when I'm speaking of body movements, I'm talking about the behavior of certain parts of the body which includes our chest, the rib cage, the diaphragm, and our lungs. So those four parts, they are going to behave differently as we breathe in and we breathe out. So the key points to remember, so when we're talking about breathing in, we are meaning inhalation or inspiration. So if you see that term inspiration, please realize that it means the same as inhalation. So inhalation is the body movements that would allow the oxygen gas in the air to enter our lungs. So normally our chest will expand, our rib cage will be raised up and our diaphragm would be flattened as it contracts. So this is gonna allow the lungs to inflate. Now with breathing out, which is referred to as exhalation or expiration, we are allowing the carbon dioxide to leave our lungs. So the opposite is pretty much going to happen. Our chest is going to contract, the rib cage is going to go down and inwards, and our diaphragm is going to return to its relaxed position in that curved up position. Alright, so just remember, breathing, that involves the body movements that allow air to enter and leave the lungs. Now moving on to the next word, gaseous exchange, the next term, gaseous exchange. This involves the movement of gases across a respiratory surface. So when we're talking about respiratory surfaces, they will differ depending on the organism. So key points to remember, the respiratory surfaces in humans will be the alveoli, in fish it would be the gills and in plants it would be the stomata. So most of the time we focus on gaseous exchange in humans. So as, as you can see here in the diagram I have the alveolus which is closely related, situated to the blood capillary. So you're seeing how the oxygen gas needs to leave the alveolus and enter the blood while the carbon dioxide from the blood would leave the capillary and enter the alveolus. So there's an exchange of gases at the respiratory surface, hence why it is known as gaseous exchange. So we have the oxygen entering and the carbon dioxide leaving. And this process is going to be occurring through diffusion. So remember, diffusion is the movement of molecules from a region of high concentration to a region of low concentration. So gases exchange, the movement of gases across a respiratory surface. Now the last term, respiration. Respiration is the release of energy from the breakdown of food in our cells. So this is happening within our cells. So key points to remember. The main food source that we'll be using is glucose. So the glucose is broken down in the mitochondria, so that is the site of respiration in the cells. So respiration occurs in the, both the presence of oxygen or in the absence of oxygen. So we're going to look at the two types of respiration, aerobic respiration and anaerobic respiration. So in aerobic respiration, oxygen is required. So we have the glucose being broken down in the presence of oxygen to form carbon dioxide and water with energy being released. Now in anaerobic respiration, no oxygen is required and there are two types that you need to be familiar with. The first type, this occurs in yeast and bacteria. So we have the glucose being broken down in the absence of oxygen into carbon dioxide and ethanol with a little bit of energy being produced. Now ethanol is an alcohol, so sometimes this type of anaerobic respiration is referred to as alcoholic fermentation. So the glucose is broken down in the absence of oxygen. Now the second type 
occurs in animal muscle cells. So during strenuous activity, so for example, if we are exercising or if we're running a race, inside our muscle cells, the glucose can actually be broken down in the absence of oxygen. So in this case, now we're seeing how lactic acid is a product along with a little bit of energy produced. So you need to know the differences between aerobic respiration and anaerobic respiration. So now you should know the differences between these three terms, breathing, gaseous exchange, and respiration.